Hello everyone. So I've got something a little bit different for you today. This is going to be my first ever attempt to brewing a sour beer and it's going to be a lime and lemongrass infused goza. So let's get into it. So this beer is actually a clone recipe kit from Brew Day, and they've sent me this for the purpose of review. So thank you very much for that again, guys. Much appreciated. And it's based on a commercial beer by Bang the Elephant Brewery called Benjo Baronga. Uh, and yeah, it's got limes in it. It's got lemongrass. It's obviously got salt in it because it's a goza. And we've got uh, Philly sour yeast in there too. So quite an exciting recipe. Uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing how this one comes out. And I'm going to start this off just by going through what's actually included in the kit. I'll put a link to the kit in the description below. So if you fancy purchasing this one and having a go yourself, get over to the Brew Day website and have a look at it there. Uh, very reasonably priced, first of all. So I think it's uh, £22.50 last time I checked. And bearing in mind some of the ingredients that you've got here, that represents pretty good value as far as I'm concerned. So obviously, as this is a commercial kit, I won't go through the recipe in full, but I'll give you an idea of what the ingredients are which are included. So we've got just over five kilos of Pilsner and wheat malt. It's basically a 50-50 split between the two. So I'm not really familiar with this type of recipe. I don't know whether that's a typical uh, grain bill or whatever, but essentially it's like a, a wheat beer sort of grain bill that we've got there. We've not got a huge amount of hops with this one because it's um, that's not really what the style is all about. But we do have a nice little selection of Magnum for bittering hops. We've got some Brewer's Gold uh, for the aroma, along with some Simcoe uh, late in the boil as well. So a few hops there. We've also got a packet of Himalayan salt and coriander seeds, which again, obviously going to be adding some aromatics and the salty flavour for the goes. And you've got 23 grams of the Philly sour yeast here. So this has been repackaged, but essentially that's equivalent to two of the packets that you would buy normally. Those are quite expensive. So again, a big chunk of that um, money that you pay for this kit is gonna be covering the cost of the yeast, uh, which is one of the reasons I think it's quite good value. The reason you need a double size pitch essentially is because that affects the amount of sourness that the yeast creates. So uh, I went to a seminar by one of the Laumond uh, people at Brewcon, I believe it was, um, and they talked about the factors that affect the uh, final pH of beers brewed with Philly sour, one of them was the pitch rate. So I think it's actually quite crucial that you have a significant or a suitable amount of yeast for the sourness or final pH you want, which is obviously why we've got the equivalent of two packets here rather than one. The instructions also talk about fermentation temperature being quite important for that as well, which we'll get into later. So I mentioned limes and lemongrass. Obviously those are not actually in the kit because they're fresh ingredients. So you have to purchase those yourselves now. There's quite a lot of limes required for this. So it's 14 limes given on the recipe for a 23 litre batch. Uh, we're going to be using the juice and the zest of those. So you do need to factor in. There is a little bit of additional cost from um, the limes and also one stick of lemongrass that you need for it as well. Uh, and there's going to be a bit of work there to actually zest all of those limes and juice them too. So yeah, haven't got those here at the moment, but I will be getting those sorted shortly. We've got a... Nice beer map from Bang the Elephant. Love the artwork uh, for this brewery. I've not actually tried any of their beers, I don't think, but I've heard some really good things uh, about them, especially their uh, Impy Stouts, I think, are really good, and a nice little sticker to go on the beer fridge too. So that's what you get in the kit. The instructions are extensive and really well written, as with the previous uh, Neon Raptor kit that I did. So we've got three pages of instructions there. It goes into everything now. There are some elements of this that I would suggest that, you know, maybe more for the kind of advanced brewer. But on the whole, it's a pretty standard um, kind of brewing method because it's Philly sour yeast. You don't have to, you don't need to do anything um, particularly different in terms of the souring side of things because the Philly sour yeast essentially sours the beer as part of the fermentation process rather than you having to do any kind of kettle souring or adding any other bacteria or anything like that. So the beauty of this yeast is you don't have to worry about any additional processes aside from a standard uh, brewing method. 
and you also don't need to worry about contamination of any of your equipment through the souring process either. So that suits me absolutely fine because I, one of the reasons I probably haven't done sour beers in the past is um, because of those added complications that I didn't really want to get into. Oh, and one other thing that I nearly missed out, we've got some lactose as well. So that's just gonna help to offset the sourness and keep a little bit of body and sweetness in the beer as well, I guess. Uh, so in terms of the finished beer, as I mentioned before, it's 23 litres a batch. You should be ending up around 5.4%, uh, 23 IBUs based on a 72% uh, efficiency. I've plugged all those numbers into Brewfather and they all match up almost perfectly. Brewfather reckons that the final gravity will be a bit higher than what is stated here. So the ABV is not quite matching up, but otherwise everything is spot on. So we'll see. But uh, yeah, as per usual, really clear, detailed instructions and um, should be pretty straightforward. Fingers crossed, famous last words. There we have it, the finished Benjo Baronga. Lime goes, looks great in the glass, I must say. Holding a quite nice sort of fluffy white head on it, um, which doesn't seem to be dropping away like it can do sometimes with some sour beers. And quite well carbonated, so these sorts of styles you generally tend to have quite a high carbonation on it. Um, I think I went for about 2.6 or 2.7 volumes on there, so streaming carbonation coming up the glass. Um, just before we get into taste testing and all of that sort of stuff, let me just talk about how the beer came out in the end through the brewing process, which you've just seen. So everything went very smoothly and worked really well. Uh, the only thing that was a bit off was my final ABV, which was about four and a half percent. Brewfather was predicting a slightly lower ABV anyway than what the kit was uh, targeting. But it was also down to me in terms of the volume or the final volume of the beer was a little bit over. I didn't account for the very sort of low quantity of hops in this one. So basically the amount of losses that I would normally get with uh, the typical hopping rate that I might have on a pale ale or something wasn't there. Um, so there's a little bit more work went into the kettle and I was a bit over volume. So uh, there was that and the final gravity was a bit higher that it finished out a bit higher than it was supposed to be um on the video my mash temperature was very slightly above the target of 63 i think but i didn't really check that so it may have crept up a little bit higher afterwards so sometimes you just take a, a measurement and then the heat distributes a bit and it's actually a bit warmer so i didn't check that so possibly my mash temp went a little bit higher than the target so maybe that was why the fg crept up a bit anyway no big deal really it just means it's a little bit more of a sessionable strength i don't think the beer has suffered for that at all um and it wasn't down to the kit itself in any way because other other than that, all the numbers were spot on in terms of the software and the predictions that came out. Um, so if I'd hit my volumes, I would have been on target for the um, predicted efficiency and all that kind of stuff as well. So as far as the souring part of it goes, as I said at the start, it was really simple and straightforward because you basically just brew and ferment the beer as you normally would. There's no real difference to it. The only things you need to be aware of if you are using the uh, Philly Sour Yeast are that some of the parameters of your, your brew will affect 
the amount of sourness that that, that yeast is going to deliver. So I'll put a link to the uh, material from Laumons themselves if I can find it. Obviously, the guys at Brude have worked all of this out and kind of zeroed it in for this kit to try and get it on point. Uh, but if you're doing your own version of this or using that yeast, you should be aware of um, things like the fermentation temperature. So it's really important to have good fermentation temperature control if you're trying to do um, this kit or uh, any other beer with that particular yeast. Um, the constitution of the grist in terms of the amount of simple sugars in it and things like that, I think, can have an effect. And also the pitch rate, which I mentioned at the beginning. So uh, you may need certainly more than one packet of this yeast for a, a normal size batch because uh, that will affect the amount of sourness generated as well. So one of the great things about doing a beer like this from a kit where the recipe has all been tweaked and worked out for you in advance is that you don't really have to worry too much about zeroing in those parameters to make sure you hit the right level of sourness. That was all done in advance by Brude, and as long as you follow the instructions then you should end up in the right ballpark. So overall the brew itself was really pretty straightforward and simple and the only thing that was a bit traumatic was having to zest and juice 14 limes which was a massive ball ache to be perfectly honest but it is what it is you can't really get away from the fact that they're not going to be sending out fresh ingredients like that in the kit and you've got to put a little bit of elbow grease in um, in order to yeah process the limes basically um it did occur to me actually that obviously the base kit that is given for this you could potentially swap the limes out for something else so if you wanted to use it um, for a different kind of fruited sour you could potentially do that you might want to rejig some of the other ingredients in there as well but um, I don't see any reason why you couldn't use it as a base recipe for any kind of fruited sour uh, or fruited goes even and uh, one thing I didn't mention before is that actually they do sell a half size version of this kit as well so if you want to do uh, 11 and a half litres as opposed to 23 litres, maybe you're not confident that you want to do a full keg's worth um, of a sour beer, particularly if it's your first effort at it like me, then there's a half size option, which is really good as well. Um, and that's obviously about half the price too. So go and check that out on the Brew Day website. Obviously, there will be a link to the kit uh, in the description. Anyway, enough chat. Let's get into the beer itself because that head has finally sort of dropped away a little bit. It's still keeping a nice little cap on the top there. As I said before, it's not always the case for sour beers. Um, it will often sort of drop away to nothing, but it's definitely got decent head retention on there. And the the level of carbonation will certainly help with that, but uh, you might have expected perhaps some of the kind of oils from the, the citrus zest and stuff like that to have maybe interfered with that a bit, but um, not in this case. So let's have a look at it anyway. On the nose, obviously, it's like being smacked in the face with a lime, and in a nice way. But uh, yeah, just massive lime aroma coming off of it. There's some other interesting aromatics in the background, probably from the, the lemongrass and the coriander. Don't really get anything from the hops, but they're in such a small quantity relative to the other ingredients, that's not surprising. There's a little bit of sweetness there, and it's a weird way to describe an aroma, but it's almost got a sort of frothiness to it. So it's reminiscent of a sort of lime soda kind of thing on the nose. Um, it's definitely making me think of kind of lime cocktails like margarita or the Brazilian kind of equivalent of that, caipirinha. Lime curd as well, so a little bit of sweetness there too. It smells really good and obviously very liming, as you'd expect with the amount of limes that have gone in there. So let's do the taste test. So it's full on lime flavor. Soundness on it is very sort of citric acid um, based. So it is like, initially it is like chewing on a wedge of lime. And then you get a little bit of sweetness coming in on the back end, but it's still quite drying. It's got very sort of refreshing quality to it. And fairly like sort of full body as well. I think the carbonation sort of makes it kind of fill, fill the palate out a little bit. There's a little bit of a savory note there. So I think the salt comes through in that respect, um, but it's not sort of noticeably, you know, sort of salty or saline tasting. As far as the sourness levels goes, I'm not at all an expert in terms of sour beers. Like I said, it's the first one I've ever brewed. 
I do dabble uh, with drinking commercial versions. I would put this definitely above some of the more sort of entry level sours, if you can describe them that way in terms of the level of sourness. So this would still be, I guess the word to describe would be puckering for people who aren't used to sour beers. They might find it pretty intense, but it's not at the other end of the scale, it's not sort of turn your face inside out kind of sour either. So I find this quite um, drinkable, although it has got quite an intense sort of uh, citric acid kind of sourness to it. So again, coming back to the kind of cocktail analogy, if you really like lime margaritas or caipirinhas and that real intense kind of lime juice hit, this might be right up your street. It's it's really intense flavour-wise, but I'm really enjoying this, I've got to say, and it's definitely going to be a good, good summer beer. So if we get some more of this uh, warm weather coming along and a few more barbecues, this will be getting nailed. And I did try a little experiment with it um, the weekend just gone, actually, which was doing a shandy with it to basically try and get some people to, to try it who weren't that keen on really sour beers. And uh, that worked really well as well. So uh, that might be heresy to uh, <laughs> make a shandy with a uh, sour beer or a goes, but I tried it with this and it actually worked really well. So something that you might want to try out too. Anyway, I think that's a great beer. Uh, and again, a really well put together kit by Brewday. Now, if you're interested in buying this beer, there's a little special offer for the first few people who go to the Brewday website and order one of these kits, which is a free Bang the Elephant glass. And I'll put a picture up on the screen now. But uh, as you can see, some really stylish looking glassware there, which you could get a hold of. Very limited numbers on these. So I think there's only about 10 uh, available. If you want to claim one of them, when you put your order in, in the uh, notes or order notes section uh, on the website, it should be pretty obvious where that is when you go to put the order in, then just type into the order notes, dudes brews, and the first 10 or so people who order the kit and type that into the order notes will get a free Bang the Elephant glass. So if you manage to get yourself one of those, well done. <laughs> and uh, I hope you enjoy the little added bonus there. So thank you very much, Day. Thank you very much, Bang the Elephant, for sharing your recipe with those guys so they can put this kit together. And uh, if anyone else gets hold of this kit and brews it, do let me know in the comments how you get on with it. Um, I hope you enjoy it. Like I said, if you're not really into sour beers, then this might not be the first one for you to try out. But um, if you like a really zesty, intensely flavoured, uh, citrus-based kind of sour beer, then I reckon this will tick the boxes for you. So there we go. Cheers, everybody. See you soon. I'm the dude. So that's what you call me, you know, uh, that or uh, his dudeness or uh, duder or, uh, you know, El Duderino, if you're not into the whole brevity thing.